Hi, Eric Gibault, ericgibault.com and today, at last, I'm going to present you the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. Let's start. First, thank you very much to Olympus Spain who sent me uh, the gear, not just the camera body, but also the 40 to 150 mm 2.8 Pro and also the 45 mm 1.2 Pro. I will do a separate review for these two lenses, but today on this video is just about this body. Let's carry on. They also sent me the grip. You don't have to put it on, but uh, as they sent it to me, I put it and I tried it. So I will also speak a bit about the grip, what I think about it. So I will uh, show you some pictures and video I've made uh, with the 40 to 150 uh, and the 45 millimeter. Um, to give you some idea, uh, actually I'm not going to get in every de technical details because you can, you can find the specification on Olympus uh, website. But most people uh, who follow my channel and know that I've been using uh, Olympus for about six years with the two uh, OMD uh, 5, uh, EM5 Mark II, uh, they want to know my feeling, what I think, my sensation, what, what I felt about this camera. So I'm going to give some technical specs, but mostly I will tell you more about uh, how I felt with the camera. Uh, I didn't know this one, the Mark III. I've used the one Mark II. I really liked it. And this one don't, doesn't have that many differences, but the differences that are there are good. So I'm going to tell you more in detail what I feel about this camera. As you can see, this is a mirrorless camera. You can see the sensor here. This is a micro four third, a small sensor. Uh, many people uh, laugh because it's small, people use larger sensor and people who use micro four third laugh because they, they say that this uh, sensor is really strong, so uh, powerful. So obviously it sounds like I'm an Olympus uh, fan, yes I am an Olympus user but I do recommend other brands too, okay? But I'm really in love with this gear, okay, honestly. So uh, this micro four third sensor has 20.4 megapixel uh, resolution. It does raw file in 12 uh, bits of uh, color uh, color depth. It has the TruePix 9 uh, uh, processor, so it doesn't mean much. I mean, if you don't know the, the 8 and the 7, all this doesn't matter, but it's really fast, okay? It has a clean, a sensor cleaning. I remind that uh, the first uh, company to make this uh, ultrasonic uh, sensor cleaning system was uh, first company was Olympus, and this is so powerful that uh, on my OMD5 Mark II, uh, two of them have had them for six years now. I have never had to clean the sensor manually. Never, never, not once, not twice, never. So this is really efficient. This is incredible. So another thing I like to straight the, stress the point on is uh, the stabilization. The IBIS is incredible. I know that people say, yeah, but there are other products and other cameras with uh, uh, stabilization, whether it's a lens or an IBIS, but you're going to see that. I mean, this one has seven stop stabilization. And if you actually use a stabilized lens, like the 12 to uh, 100 millimeter that is uh, stabilized, then you get 7.5 stops. This is massive. And people don't realize very often how is an Olympus stabilization. It's incredible because it's like, like if it was a, a Citroen DS, you know, the old car that was really smooth. This is really smooth. So now I'm going to show you an example. I recorded with my 12 to 40 millimeter 2.8 at 12 millimeter. So this is wide angle, very something you do often on uh, in videos. So I show you walking and running. It's testing stabilization, walking, and held. Testing stabilization and held running. As you can see, this is really impressive. So I, I leave you a link here of a comparison I made with the Fujifilm X-T4. 
and people could not really believe it but that's it i mean in video the the way it goes is so smooth this is really incredible and the fuji film was good in picture stabilization but in video was not close to that so yes you probably think yeah but if you use a tele lens that's another story yes but it's still incredible so i'm going to show you a picture right now i made with this lens on 150 millimeter which is the equivalent of a 300 millimeter in full frame at one quarter of a second and it's sharp i could actually go lower than one quarter of a second but i was outdoor and uh, i would have needed to put uh, an nd filter on it to get lower speed because i was already as the aperture was completely closed so uh I would have needed uh, an ND filter, I didn't have it with me uh, on this size, okay? So this is really incredible. So let's speak about autofocus. Uh, it has a 121 uh, focusing point, uh, which is, uh, for some it will be not many, and for others it will be a lot. For me that is only one point, I think it's great, uh, but uh, I prefer to use one point, but obviously if you do action photography, you want to have several points uh, to follow your subject all this so this is really useful okay uh, it has face and eye detection but for many years already they had it but it works even better it works really perfect then you can do focus speaking in case you do manual focusing you will know exactly where your uh, focusing point is it means that if you want to work in manual mode with your uh, manual uh, focusing with your camera with a, a present uh, or nowadays uh, lens it's okay but if you want to use a vintage lens that's great because even if it's on very old lens you will always know where your focusing is being made so this is really practical really handy and really precise okay then there is one thing that uh, astro photographer will love uh, I'm not sure if it was from day one on this camera or it was a firmware update, I can't remember, but you can actually focus on stars. So uh, night sky, you can focus on stars. So and this is really good because uh, it, sometimes it's really hard to, to be precisely focused. Even if you go on infinity, sometimes it's no good. So this way you get it right. So I know some people are surprised to, to hear that you can do astrophotography with micro four third. Of course you can. Uh, actually, I don't think uh, Olympus would bother putting a, a mode, a focusing mode for star if you could not do that kind of photography. And obviously, there are many pictures like this that are on the internet, can check. And uh, star photography is made uh, with uh, micro, micro four third, there are many. You can also do focus stacking. What is that? Well, you actually make several pictures, and the focusing point is going uh, forward and backward. So it means then you will stack all your picture together and you will get uh, everything in focus. Uh, if you're making a picture of an insect, for example, you don't want the tip of the leg only to be in focus, you want the full fly, for example, or full mosquito, this way you can. It's also really useful uh, when you're actually doing uh, product photography, when you want the whole product to be uh, presentable in focus, okay? Or uh, maybe also in landscape photography when you have something uh, in the first uh, plane and you really want to have uh, everything in focus, uh, focus stacking is really useful. You can do it in the camera uh, with making several pictures, but otherwise if you're going to process in your computer, you can do up to 999 pictures and then stack them together. Obviously, you can do that in RAW file, not just JPEG like some cameras. You do get your RAW files and you can stack them together. Bracketing, you have exposure, bracketing, uh, plus minus 5 EV. Then you have uh, ISO bracketing. Then you have HDR bracketing. HDR bracketing is uh, great uh, because uh, well, many people when they hear HDR, they just go like crazy because imagine the crazy colors, but this is not uh, HDR. This is tone mapping actually. So I speak about really high dynamic range uh, bracketing. It means you'll get uh, better detail in highlights and better details in shadows. So you can actually do it directly in camera. It works really well and you have more bracketing options. I just speak about the one most people ask for, okay? You have 15 artistic filters. 
I never use them, I don't like it. I prefer to do it in post-production, whatever I want to do, but some people really love this, to do it in camera. So if you want to do black and white, sepia, some special effects, all this, you have 15 of these, they're in the camera. I will not use them, but if you want, they are there, okay, don't worry. Even if it's a high-end uh, camera, maybe you don't expect to have them there, but some people want them because they don't want to work in post-production, they prefer to have it in camera. There's something I really love about Olympus, which is this as you can see this orange uh, mass there you see it this is overexposed okay and now if i go here okay see this blue here this is underexposed it means uh with a mirrorless in general you cannot miss uh, the exposure before shooting but with Olympus, it's even better because it's not the typical zebra they put and very often you don't see exactly what it is. You really have full uh, flat color, uh, orange for highlights and blue for uh, underexposed. I think you can change the color actually, if you don't like these colors, okay. But this is the default setting. And you really know exactly where in your picture it will be overexposed, underexposed. It's impossible to miss. I actually made a video that explained how to uh, setting, uh, set this up. I'll leave you the link here. I made it with my OMD M5 Mark II, but it's really similar, okay? The way it works is similar, so I'll leave you the link, okay? So, let's speak about ISO. This is uh, where most people uh, actually criticize Micro Four Thirds, uh, telling that if you uh, go up with the ISO, you get a lot of noise. So, uh, I'm going to show you first the results, the test I've made. Uh, native it goes from 200 up to 6400 ISO and you can actually extend it from 64 up to 25,600 ISO I feel that they're okay up to 3200 but they are actually usable at 6400 so most people they get this noise because they don't actually know how to use a micro four third and uh, in many situations they do not need to have the ISO higher they just need to drop speed they should they should trust the IBIS and know that stabilization will be uh, okay obviously in some situation like uh, action photography like sports you cannot drop the speed because your subject is moving but honestly with the result you get here in an indoor basketball game you could perfectly make pictures at the enough speed and the right ISO it will be okay so honestly I think people who want uh, to do a uh, star photography also I can tell you that a sky uh, star not a singer I mean about this the sky you can actually uh, with 3200 uh, ISO make a picture perfectly without any problem okay so I think the results are really uh, good for what I've seen so far with my OMD EM5 Mark II, I think up to 16, 1600, but this one is at least one or two stops better, okay? To give you an idea of uh, who, is, uh, this camera, who is this camera aiming to, uh, I'm going to give you the uh, life expectancy of the shutter, 400,000 uh, 400, actuation. 400,000 actuation, this is crazy, this is almost half a million. So you really feel that this is aimed to people who are going to use this camera, really uh, use and abuse, okay? So uh, this is fantastic. Now let's speak about shutter speed. It goes from 60 seconds when actually many cameras start on 30 seconds maximum, otherwise you have to go to bulb mode. This one is 60 seconds, up to one eight thousandth of a second in mechanical shutter. And with the electronic shutter is up to uh, 132 uh, thousandths, <laughs> that's hard to say, uh, of a second, okay? And the bow mode is 30 minutes. 30 minutes actually may sound short, but I'll tell you a bit more just after what I'm going to say, why you don't actually need much more than 30 minutes, okay? Let's speak about resolution. For some people, uh, 20 million resolution is not much because they really want to have higher resolution but you realize you don't always need very high resolution sometimes for product photography for example you do want high resolution but for many other pictures like uh, social uh, reportage or thing, weddings you don't actually need a really high resolution so olympus uh several models ago like mine my is six years old already had it you could do high res how does it work it actually moves the sensor half a pixel each way 
and then it stacks all the pictures together to get higher resolution. On mine, you do need to do that on a tripod, but on this one, for the highest version, 80 million pixel, you need a tripod, but otherwise you can do handheld up to 50 million pixel. I'll show you a picture handheld, and uh, it's a bad luck. It's made, uh, gives me 50 million, it's handheld. So actually, when you need really high resolution, you can get it. The, you can get it in JPEG or in RAW file. If you want the maximum, use a tripod. Otherwise, you use handheld, and 50 million is not bad. And then let's go to the big chunk, the part I really love, which is called live composite. What is that? Well, actually, uh, you want to do a long exposure photography and uh, maybe one hour, let's say you do one hour. For many cameras, that's a big problem because you will get some bending, really a lot of noise, all this. With Olympus, you can do live composite. What is that? You're going to make several pictures of, let's say, 30 seconds. So it adds 30 seconds and 30 seconds full time during as long as you want, let's say one hour. And then it will uh, just show what has moved from one picture to the other. So it, let's say you do uh, uh, stars, well, you get the trail, okay, but the rest, if you have a tree here or a house here, it won't change. Or you do uh, the sea, for example, and you want silky uh, aspect, the rocks will stay where they were and the sea will be moved, okay, it will uh, keep what has been changed from one picture to the other. So this is really great because. Uh, you don't get as much noise, you don't get as much bending and as if it was with some uh, cameras, for example. Uh, Sony uh, bending is well known for that. And actually, uh, the good thing is that, uh, let's say you do a one hour picture on a reflex camera, then it will do another extra hour in the dark to then uh, erase, uh, to see what noise you get and then they, they will uh, take it out of your main picture, the real picture. In this case, you can also do this extra picture to erase noise, noise reduction. But if you were adding picture of 30 seconds, it will just make an extra picture of 30 seconds. It means that you will do one hour and 30 seconds. In another camera, you will probably one hour for a picture and one hour for noise reduction would be two hours. I also used a lot this uh, feature to uh, light for light painting for product. I put the product and then I paint with a small uh, LED light like this. I put on four seconds and then I see how it adds up and then I go painting where I want all this because you actually see in real time all the, uh, the picture is being built. So this is great. For example, uh, once I was doing a night sky picture, it was really cold. Well, I had my camera outside the car and then from my uh, smartphone with uh, connected with Wi-Fi, I could see in real time all my picture was being built and when you decide to stop you just press the button and you stop and that's it. So this is really the probably the most uh, amazing feature in my opinion uh, with the Olympus. I think they should speak more about it. Another uh, feature I really like is the live ND. It was not on the uh, One Mark II, uh, it's not either on mine, uh, which is a lot older. What is live ND? Well, you can actually have like uh, an ND filter, but it's not like the ND filter I use when I do flash photography. I want to cut light and put a physical ND filter. This is not for that. This is for when you want to make uh, pictures of uh, like a silky water, for example. Then you can actually do it handheld on tripod. Tripod, you can do actually longer. We can stop up to ND32, which is five stops. So uh, I'll show you a sample here I made. Uh, I think it was on, I was on 250th of a second. It's down to half a second. I'm not sure. We need to calculate, okay? But as you can see, the water is uh, more silky. So it's great, for example, if you go around and you don't have a ND filter with you and you see some, uh, some kind of river or anything, you want to have it move like this. You can actually do it with your camera directly without having your filter with you. This is a, a great feature, I think. For action photography, let's speak about uh, the burst rate. Uh, you get up to 15 frames per second uh, with a mechanical shutter, which is a lot compared to many cameras, uh, even uh, the fastest reflex cameras. Uh, most of them don't get that fast. And mirrorless cameras, not many get this, even if uh, you... Uh, uh, not many get this using the mechanical shutter. But if you use the electronic uh, shutter, then you get up to 60 frames per second. And uh, this is really incredible. 
uh, and there's also another feature which is great it's called pro capture this is not new it was already on the one uh, the one mark two okay you get a uh, 60 frame per second or 18 frames per second depends how you want to do it but up to 60 so how does it work when i off press the trigger it starts making picture and then when i fully pressed it carries on making a burst okay it means that imagine your kid is running on the football uh, football uh, field and then he's going to score a goal but you know you don't know exactly when so you start pressing halfway it will do up to it, it will make start making picture and you can keep up to 35 picture be, before the actual uh, triggering and then in total you keep can keep up to 99 pictures it means as it started before actually doing the full trigger you actually uh, can never miss the exact moment so for people who do action photography this is really a great feature uh, time lapse many people ask for time lapse yes it does from one second up to 24 hours obviously uh, if you go for 24 hours you can get your camera connected to uh, the power so it means uh, the battery won't die before the end but yes you can do it well, from one second to 24 hours so perfect then one thing that I always ask uh, I, I worry about when I see cameras is the flash synchronization you get from 250th of a second which is uh, the minimum I like and then if you go with the high sync then up to one eight thousandth of a second so nothing to complain about this is what you can expect for that for, for that uh, level of camera so I think this is great so let's speak about the screen it's a uh, three inch like this uh, as you can see sample the camera is not mine uh, I'll have, I have to give it back okay I wish it was mine but it's not and uh, let's speak about the ergonomy this is really great when you feel my hand is not too big not too small and this it, this is really perfect I get it in there it, it's really nice I mean button folds under your finger it's perfect actually uh, when I made the ISO test pictures uh, this is not a lighted a button it would be great it would, would be lighted but it's not okay so Olympus you could uh, better that but otherwise uh, uh, obviously in this case the battery life would be shorter but uh, I could touch a button in the dark without checking I knew exactly where it was okay so it was really nice and you can actually uh, configure the buttons and uh, change the setting you can as, uh, give them a new function different feature really good they're really well placed everything is well placed oh by the way let's speak about the grip as it's here okay i don't like grips because i think it's maybe too big i've used some but i think it's too big but when you do a lot of vertical picture i must say this is really comfortable because uh, you don't uh, force your wrist it's really nice the buttons are also perfectly placed the only thing i could say about the grip i have to say something negative otherwise people don't believe me okay no honestly I think that uh, you get one battery here maybe the shape should be different but it would be good to have two batteries in there one of the batteries still in the body it means that if I want to charge it I have uh, or to connect uh, here the charger or I have to actually uh, remove the grip and get the battery out but I understand for the shape of the camera and the size it was really hard to get this together okay Two together but when i had my 5d mark ii in my, my grip at two batteries it was really great but well that's not uh, too much of a disaster okay oh by the way let's speak about uh, weather sealing it's weather sealed uh dust and uh splash all this it's really great and also you get uh down to 10 degrees celsius uh, minus okay uh, protection so this is really a camera this is really nice as you can see everything is sealed here i've got uh, some uh, small doors all this i will give you about connectivity after but is everything perfectly sealed okay here you have uh, the door to the sd card to sd card here so this is really a camera you've got in your hand it's really nice really 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 nice really good to holding it and uh, I think you don't have to think when you use it the button are really really well placed I mean uh, you look at this I mean you the recording button falls right on the right on the finger perfectly and everything is 
perfect here you have a button dedicated button for uh for the depth of field but also you have a button for uh the white balance if you want to point at a gray card you just press and point at the gray card and you get it so it, it's really really nice uh placed everything you can actually configure uh, the buttons all this i really love it and the only thing i would say that is a bit tough is uh the olympus menus they are really really uh complicated for someone who comes from uh, comes from a simple reflex canon menus are really well organized i would say because i was coming from canon and olympus are a lot tougher but but you cannot compare a reflex menu with the mirrorless menu why because there are a lot more features and you have to put them somewhere in a menu in my camera the 5 uh, mark ii uh, there are some uh, contradictions sometimes you would activate one thing it would not work because you have to disactivate somewhere else in another part they fixed it with firmware upgrade, uh, update okay in this case i didn't see that kind of problem the menu are a lot of menus but it's organized is but but you cannot expect to actually use a camera enjoy your camera without learning how it works so you will have to read the manual read the menus and learn how your camera works and you can actually really enjoy it really use it great let's speak about the video it does 4k cine format in 24p uh, this is a really wide uh, look and then if you go for uh, the 16 uh, 9 format you get 30 25 and 24p uh, uh, in 4k then you have full hd at 60 50 30 25 and 24p you can do a continuous recording time of uh, 29 minutes i know that some people want more uh, because before it has to be 30 minutes because uh, there was a tax problem but this tax doesn't exist anymore so you could have longer okay so many still limit the time for uh, overheating problem or possibility to protect the sensor so I don't know if for you 29 minutes is okay for me it's okay but for people some people it's not okay because they want to do continuous recording like in weddings all this so maybe this is something you should evaluate yourself it's hard for me to tell you uh, i can say that this is maybe the problem with uh, some fuji film that limit to 15 minutes maybe 15 minutes is short to 30 i think it's okay it all depends what you do okay you can also do a uh, slow motion at 120p uh, in full hd and you have 14 effects you can actually have on your video like a black and white or whatever effects okay 14 effects and you have also the lock 400 which give you a flat a flat profile to do a color uh, science after in post production okay so i think what they offer for this vid for video is nice it's okay uh, would i buy this for video i don't know because I don't do much video do professional videographer would use that I've got no idea. But I think this camera is more thought for photography, but the video uh, feature are good. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the SD card. Here you've got two slots, two SD card. It supports USH1 and USH2. Then you have uh, HDMI connector type D. Then you have a USB 3 type C, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, and also you have a uh, microphone connector a jack 3.5 and uh, head uh, headphone a connector 3.5 also the battery life is uh, 420 pictures uh, i don't think it's much i would prefer to have 500 uh, always claim for 500 minimum pictures and for video it give you uh, up to from 85 up to 140 minutes depending if it's full hd or 4k honestly 420 it's not many but uh, my experience with olympus you can get a lot more if you want but for this you must uh, configure and uh, have some uh, way of using it first switch off the camera uh, every time you're not using it because sometimes people don't realize that if uh, the camera is against the body this thing is your eye and actually uh, you see screen is switched off but the viewfinder is working so it means you're actually uh, using the battery second you can actually have uh, the autofocus working full time like you pre-focus and that consumes a lot of battery you should switch it off and have it work only when you have press the the trigger okay and uh, if you don't do that you will use a lot of battery same thing with uh, the stabilizer you can have it work only if it's moving otherwise if you have the option that uh, it's on full time it will consume a lot of battery so this is one thing that uh, a tip that can use do that to get uh, a lot better battery life 
The weight is 480 grams without grip, without lens. I think it's okay for people who actually use uh, that kind of camera. They used to have a heavy camera. That's not much. Really acceptable. And really, I think this is uh, something you can you cannot ask better than that for the size and what they offer. I think it's fine. Okay. Many people who criticize uh, Micro Four Third, they say they don't get, they cannot get shallow depth of field. So I'll show you a picture right now. As you can see, you can get really shallow depth of field. It could be even shallower if I wanted. Uh, to get short depth of field is not just the sensor size, there are other things, the distance of the subject, the focal length you're using, and also the good thing about the uh, Olympus camera, uh, some lenses you can uh, focus as short as 20 centimeters, and this one, the, the 40 to 150 from 70 centimeters, when the equivalent in full frame would be 1 meter 50. So I can really get short depth of field if I want. And uh, for me, it's not something I really research, but as you can see, if you want, you can. Well, there are more features I didn't speak about, like uh, perspective correction like this, uh, or lifetime, it's like for long exposure, some features that, some more feature I didn't speak about, but it doesn't really matter. It's really a complete camera. You have really a lot. So uh, what could I say as a conclusion? Well, very often people ask me, Will you stay with Olympus? Will you keep using Olympus? Well, I'm not with Olympus in a way. I don't work for Olympus. I use Olympus cameras. And it's true. I've uh, tried many cameras, reviewed many cameras for my YouTube channel. Uh, like Fujifilm, for example. I uh, like some features of Sony, although I don't like Sony cameras uh, in, in the way they look. Okay, it's like a romantic side of it. It sounds stupid. Maybe it is stupid, but I don't like the, the look really. But uh, for me, it's always the same thing. You think there are maybe other options. Yeah, I'm happy with what I have. Until you try again a new a higher level Olympus camera. And then you realize for me they are the perfect cameras. It sounds like I work for Olympus or sell Olympus. No, I don't. Uh, they don't actually pay me for it. But I really love it. I think for 99% of people, Olympus is the perfect camera. Maybe people do uh, action photography in really low light they should think of other kind of cameras because uh, yes in this case maybe they really need high ISO maybe when you see all the features you get with the Olympus camera the, the quality all this you it's not you don't even bother that it's a smaller sensor I don't think it's important to me okay I think it's really great so uh, honestly I think this is a camera I can really recommend okay and some people ask me, is it better, the OMD-1 Mark II or the Mark III? Well, until recently, I thought that the 1 Mark II was enough. I still think it's enough as a camera. But these extra features, that, like the live ND, being able to do high resolution uh, and held, I think for many situations, this is great. And so I think if you cannot afford the uh, OMD-1 Mark III, it's fine to get the Mark II. If you can afford it, I think it's worth to get the Mark III because uh, the value will stay longer on the market. And I think you get a camera for the next 10 years or more. I think Olympus is going to kill me thinking, well, you're telling them to keep this one? And I want to sell them the Mark IV. No, it doesn't matter. I said this camera is okay for the next 10 years for most people, okay? So I think this is a brilliant camera. I can only, only recommend it. Now, many people are worried about Olympus future, uh, telling that, yeah, but it was bought by a company that is going to uh, break it apart and sell it in pieces, all this. I think that it's showing that it's not going to happen right now, and I don't think in the future either. I really trust that. Why? Because uh, they made some new lenses, they got a new pen camera out, and probably they soon will get some more cameras out. So I don't, I don't think Olympus uh, future is something to worry about. Uh, actually, it's, well, I would worry more about Nikon than about Olympus right now. Maybe a year ago, we didn't know where, where Olympus was going. But now I think it's clear. So I don't think this is something that should stop you from buying Olympus. I think this what they offer is great. The price is really okay. The quality of lenses, quality of bodies, everything is great. I think they are great cameras. I can only recommend them, honestly. So I want to thank uh, Tito Garcia from uh, Olympus Spain 
that uh, helped me to get the camera to, to try it. Also Thierry Bourg uh, from France uh, also uh, helped me uh, speaking with uh, Olympus Spain to get it because there was some delay but it was fixed. And uh, thank you to you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, the small button on here, and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. I'll also leave you links of my gear on Amazon and also links to other parts of my YouTube channel and also link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. It's here, just down here. Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.